sunny day, I have to go up the bog to move a piece of steel that's in the way because the guys are going spreading turf there in the next few days. So I'm going to bring the tractor and have my fork on the back there. Let's go. Absolutely spectacular day to be up in the bog. Nice breeze, it's about 25 degrees out. Clear skies absolutely everywhere. So I also have all the very unique natural flora and fauna that you get in a bog. For a start you have these furze bushes here, which are a kind of a thorny bush. They grow naturally absolutely everywhere in peatland, especially in Ireland anyway. And you can see they have a very distinctive yellow flower on them. And when these are in full bloom, there's an absolutely amazing aroma from them. Uh, I think they've bloomed, they're probably going a little bit out of bloom now. Another thing that commonly grows naturally in the boglands is these silver birch trees, which are plenty of leaves on them now. They're very green and they have a very distinctive bark from the trees as well. And in April time, around April, uh, maybe March and April, they, the sap that comes up from these trees can actually be tapped off to use to make wine. And I've made some of that wine before myself. And of course, in any bogland you're going to have ferns. These are all last year's ferns. And you can see that the new ferns from this year are just about starting to grow. And in areas in the bog, uh, some this is mainly kind of a grass area. Some areas are absolutely covered in ferns. In about mid-July, the place looks like an absolute jungle with ferns. And then by September, they're all dead like that. It's an amazing change of colour that happens up here. What a wonderful place to be. And of course you have this heather, which is a very robust plant that grows in the in the wetlands and peatlands and bogs of Ireland. Uh, this is kind of a purple heather. It'll have a purple hue to it after, I'll say another month or so. Up on the high bog over there, you can see there's kind of two levels. There's the lower one, which we're on, and then there's the high bog. Uh, the high bog is the undisturbed one, which is mainly heather. Um, this one down here is the cutaway bog, but as you can see, there's still a lot of life down here. So I just found a small patch of that. Uh, very unique red moss that grows in the bog. Uh, that's the stuff I said has the iodine in it. I think it's iodine anyway, something something along those lines. And you can see we're also surrounded by natural bog cotton, which is extremely soft. Of course, there's loads of rushes in the bog as well. They'll grow in any sort of wet area. Um, they're used to make one of the icons of Kildare, which is the St. Bridget's Cross. Now up there on the high bog you have pools of water everywhere where you have frog spawn but very same here on the cutaway bog you'll also have pools of water and you can see all the frog spawn in the water the bog is actually absolutely, absolutely full of frogs uh, we'll probably see a few when I go foot and turf now peat is very hydroscopic which means it soaks water very well but it also evaporates well from the first inch of it I'd say anyway and you'll see when it starts evaporating the ground cracks and always in nature when you have a crack you will roughly have cracks at 120 degrees because naturally that is the easiest way for anything to crack. That's why so most of the cracks in the ground are always spaced out 120 degrees apart, which is kind of an interesting thing. The next time you see cracks in the ground, see does that hold true? That's nature's geometry. So out here we have some freshly cut turf, and you can see the machines cutting the turf in the videos I put up a couple of years ago there. And there's also some of last year's turf here I see as well in a very carefully constructed manner. There's various names for these. Around here they're known as clamps. That's a more unusual clamp in a cylindrical shape one. 
I just want to have a good look at one of these cylindrical clamps. Just look at the craftsmanship that goes into making these things, and these have been here for absolutely months in all sorts of weathers. I don't bother to them. Making th things like this and the skills involved in saving turf, something I'm keen to preserve anyway, but unfortunately it's something that's being lost. Um, we'd make smaller ones of those, which we'd also call churns. Although more typically our clamps are kind of uh, more square in fashion or rectangular shaped. I'm always amazed at the craftsmanship and effort that goes into these clamps. Um, this is a fairly basic one, it's very well constructed. You can see they uh, put the sods of turf uh, sloped up like this again, just to naturally kind of let the water drain off it. And the walls of it are constructed very well, very uh, robust. Now this is done after the turf has dried. People uh, foot the turf first, which is put it into little stacks like that. And there's only a few of them there normally in a piece of bog where there was turf cut, you'd have thousands of those all in lines. And then sometimes when it's more or less dry, people put it into a clamp like this just to finish it off. And you could actually leave this here over winter and the turf would actually be fine uh, until bring it home next spring. That's some of last year's turf. Now a lot of people seem to think that turf cutting is actually ruining the bogs and that once the bog is cut away it's then useless. But as you can see all around me we're driving on cut away bog. It's full of plants and it's full of natural plants as well. You have the natural grasses and reeds that grow in wetlands, you have the forest bushes, the heathers, the all behind me there you can see this kind of a forest that's a completely natural area of cut away bog that has regrown in silver birch. You can see out here you have the natural bog cotton as well, which again is all grown on cutaway bog. And we still maintain all the heather and everything and the trees that are natural to the raised bog, or the high bog as we have around here. Now contrary to what a lot of people believe, bogs are not exclusive to Ireland. There's lots of countries have bog lands like we have. Uh, Germany for instance had absolutely loads of them. But that's the thing, they had absolutely loads of them. So some people believe that the people who cut turf in Irish bogs are actually ruining it. And it's actually the opposite that it's true. It's the people who have used these bogs for absolute centuries have kept them in such good condition. That's why, as you can see behind me, all the natural plants are still here. That's why all the natural insects and frogs and everything are still here. It's because we use our resource very carefully. I don't think people understand that enough. The boglands around here are boglands that have been used by the people around here for absolute centuries and yet even though we've been using this resource we've used it responsibly and that's why it's still in such good condition that's why it's even considered for preservation that it's in such good condition yet we have been using this resource for so long so it just shows that the people who actually use it are the custodians they're the people who keep it the way it should be kept we don't need Europe for that we don't need Europe to tell us how to keep our bogs We've been doing it for thousands of years, and it's still perfect. I think we're doing a pretty good job. And we're making use of a natural resource, been completely independent in terms of home heating for some people. Much better than relying on oil. So I'm sure anyone from Ireland will be familiar with the name Bordnemona, which was a state-owned company that started harvesting peat, I don't know, 50s or 60s or something? And they harvest peat up just behind where we cut turf. We go and have a look and see what they're up to. So being a lovely sunny day as you'd expect they're out harvesting peat. They have, I don't know, about I think 800 acres of bog land around in this particular area. And the place is like a desert. Bordemona's ground is completely barren. The way they harvest their peat, using all those machines, is they just loosen up the peat dry it and then put it into these big piles here and that's used to make garden compost, peat brickets, all that sort of stuff. But the way they harvest it is kind of equivalent to strip mining. They strip the top off the bog and you can see there is not one single plant growing absolutely anywhere out there. I wouldn't imagine there is any wildlife or insects or anything. You'll see the odd hair running across, that's about it. It's like a desert. Now. There's been loads of talk about the banning of domestic turf cutting. But there hasn't been much talk of the banning of milling peat like this. Now, in terms of who is the best custodian 
of their natural resource, the domestic turf cutters or the commercial turf cutters like this. That's an easy decision to make. Anyway, I better get on home. I only came up for five minutes to move that clamp cover. I've been here for the past hour and a half. Talk to you later.